It is such a pleasure to have you here. And to make the most out of this moment, I've decided to give you guys a little treat. Paper effects are only getting more popular. And so in this tutorial, I'm going to cover three main subjects. First, I'm gonna show you how to take something simple like text and give it a paper kind of style. This is a really important section because I'm going to show you how I use some AI tools to make these effects myself. Next, I'll show you how to apply these techniques to masks, videos, and pictures. And finally, I'll show you how to create transitions using paper luma mats. I'm using After Effects as my home base, and you can follow along if you're using Premiere Pro, DaVinci, or any other software. A lot of what I'm about to cover has all kinds of uses too, so you can use this for music videos, edits, longer videos, whatever you want. And I've made a bunch of overlays that you guys can use for free by clicking the link in the description. If you want more exclusive elements, there is a fuller version for $5, but obviously that's not necessary necessary at all. It'd mean a lot if you guys could like this video and subscribe to the channel. And let's get into the tutorial. All right, I have some example text here. And the first effect I wanna show you is actually from a plugin called Red Giant Universe. Now, if you don't have that, don't worry about it. In just a second, I'm gonna show you how you can make this effect by yourself. So with this layer selected, I'm gonna look up an effect called Texturize Motion. And to look up effects, I'm using a free plugin from Video Copilot called FX Console. With Texturize Motion, automatically we get this cool texture and animation generated onto our text and if we go to the texture select we can change it to paper we can also change the blend mode from overlay to cutout so that it's just the text and you can tint it and change the texture speed and i like to go into the jitter and just lower the speed a little bit we can also use a similar effect called texturize where it's very similar but if we change this to cutout it also just doesn't animate they have different textures now let's delete that and go on to google and try to get our own texture so i'm just gonna look up paper texture i like this one i'm gonna download this one and if you don't want to use google you can also use ai so i'm gonna use this website called runaway ml nowadays there's a bunch of ai tools and websites so feel free to use whatever you want now i'm using runaway ml which you can use a free trial on if you want to test it out so I'm gonna go to the AI magic tools section and we can just go to text to image and try generating a paper texture. So that'll generate, if you want, you can change the ratio to match your composition. So actually I'll change that to 16 by nine. So you can obviously use what you got from Google. You can also keep generating a lot of stuff here until you get something that you like. So this is really cool. I'll download that and I'll keep generating until I get an image that I really like. Okay, so I got some really cool textures and I think that this is probably my more favorite one. So I'm gonna go into After Effects and just put that into my composition. Let's hide the text for now. I'm going to transform and click fit to comp. So we have this dope texture and we just wanna animate it the way that it was with the motion effect that we had. So I'm gonna click P and I'll click on the position and type in a wiggle expression. So I'll do wiggle six comma like 560 or something. Cause we just wanna make it a lot of motion. So that's a lot. And as you can see, we have a lot of like black space. So I'm going to click on it and add a CC reptile effect. And I can expand right. So just in case, I'll put everything at a thousand for each of these expand options. And obviously if your position expression goes higher, then you might wanna expand that even more. And then we can blend the borders a little bit. So I think this is good. It's a little weird when we see it in motion. And I think if we add a posterized time effect, this will look really good. So I'll type in posterized time. I'll just click this and make it to six or something. And then after that, I'm going to click enter. So that is on a different line of code. Cool, now we have this dope little texture animation, which I think is really cool. And we can also click R and go to the rotation. So I'll alt click on the rotation and do a very similar wiggle expression. I'll just do like five comma 10 and we'll see. Wow, that that is horrendous. So we're also going to add a posterized time. So I'll do posterize time and I'll try four for the rotation and then click enter after that. So that's actually a really dope texture animation and you can pre-comp that or even export it as your own overlay to use it later. 
So I'll just export that. So this is just one of the techniques that I've used to create my own overlays using computer generated sauce and real life pictures. And I've created tons of textures and overlays and graphics, and you can get a bunch of them for free in the description below if you just wanna mess around with them. There's also a full version for $5 where you get access to a bunch more exclusive overlays and effects, but obviously there's no pressure. So now that I have that overlay, I can just import it and take my text and put the overlay under the text and go to my track mat. If you don't see your track mat settings, you can toggle the switches and modes and then just alphamat it to the text. And now we have a really cool text animation. Now this is very similar, if not better, to the texturized motion effect. Another thing you can do is duplicate the text and enable the visibility and then just scale it down a little bit and you'll have this slight background to the text. Now, obviously that's a very subtle addition, but adding that little bit of extra life to your text can help a lot. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Let's go back to our original text here. And I'll show you another cool thing you can do if you wanna make your text look flashier or maybe like use it in an edit. I'm gonna click Control Y to create a new solid and I'll call this Stroke. I'm gonna turn this off for now. I'm gonna click G to take out my pen tool and just start masking the path for the letters and this is obviously really tedious but it's going to be something that's on top of the letters so this is just something to make it look a little bit cooler once that is masked out you can turn your layer back on and i'm going to look up an effect called stroke this is the default stroke so i'll click that and under path i'm going to click all masks and i'm going to disable my mask icon and just increase the size so just mess around with these settings to get something that looks pretty good and i'm going to click it to be on transparent and then we can change the color to something different so you can use the texturized motion here or one of the overlays that you've created or one of the overlays that you got from me maybe whatever you use you can just use it as an alpha mat to this little stroke in this case i'm going to use texturized motion and change the blending mode to cutout and you can try a different tint or something so i'm gonna make this red and then we can just go to the stroke and keyframe the end keyframe and put that from 100 to zero and then just mess around with the timing on that and then select both keyframes and easy ease them by clicking f9 and then boom you can mess around with the graph a little bit i am going to lower the jitter speed and then to make it less choppy i'm going to uncheck posterize source time i'm also going to lower the rotation amount and then that is another really cool addition you can have you can mix and match these techniques to get some really awesome text this works in more professional situations and it also works for just flashy edits. So I hope this is a helpful demonstration on the text aspect. Now you can also use this effect on pictures and videos. For example, let's say I just said something really cool. So let's say we have a video and we want to pause on a frame that looks cool. So we can go to this frame and control shift D to cut it and then right click and go to time and freeze frame. And then we can duplicate this layer and just mask out our subject. And you can do this using Photoshop or After Effects. Great, now that I have my mask, I can duplicate that layer and go onto the bottom layer and add any sort of texture effects. All that matters is that we want something behind this cutout so that there's a little bit of extra motion behind it. For example, I'll use Texturize Motion and change it to Cutout and then we can tint it and adjust the settings a little bit. Cool, and then we have this little bit of extra texture. And then depending on the style you want, you can also add some other effects. So I'll look up radial blur here and I'll keep that on the spin type and just lower the amount a little bit. And then we have this cool scratchy outline. Obviously it depends on the style. If you want to, you can click on the top layer as well and look up some sort of cartoon effect. And that might work with the paper depending on what you're doing. And then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tint the background a little bit. And then in case you did get the full version, I'll show you how you can use those exclusive overlays. So if I go into that graphics pack, I can take any of these like paper two, for example. Real quick, I'm gonna rename these layers. So this is the mask layer and this is the texturized background layer. So I'm just gonna drag in that paper asset, for example, and I'll make it a track mat to the mask. 
and then I can re-enable the visibility for the mask layer and change the blending mode to something like screen for the paper. So you can move this around. You can also use a bunch of different elements at once. So I'll also take in this grit and make it a track mat to the mask again. I'll set the blending mode to multiply here. So that's a little, that's a little intense, but this is pretty good if I put it over here. But even if you don't use those, that's a great extra little thing you can put onto masks. You can use it on edits. You can even use it on thumbnails. So that was with a video. You can do a very similar effect with a picture. So here I just have a simple picture. I'm just gonna duplicate it and add a texturize effect. Again, you can use any of the techniques we just talked about. And here I'll just change it to cutout and I'll change the tint a little bit and change it to canvas. And then with this little scaling animation, we have a very simple picture that now just looks more engaging. So you probably have some sort of matte transition in your files, or you can get one for free in the description below. And with that, you can make some really cool transitions. So I have two pictures here, for example. This is my family. We were just hanging out the other day. I can take one of these matte transitions so this is just a black screen and it turns white with some paper strokes, which means that anything that's white is what becomes alpha. So if we take the second picture, for example, and make it a track mat to that overlay, and then we switch it to Luma mat, move the overlay around to see that it's revealing that second picture. You can combine this with another overlay as well. So I'll just take a paper overlay from my pack here and I'm just gonna, animate the opacity to go from zero to 100 to zero here. And then we just need to change the blending mode to whatever looks good. So I'll try darken and see if that works. Yeah, this is a, a little bit of crinkles with this matte transition looks really nice. And then when the second picture comes in, you can also add some, if you have magic bullet looks, you can use film. We can animate that. If you don't have that, we can also use photo filter or any colorizing filter here and then we'll just boost up this density and then we can keyframe that so that when this matte transition finishes it comes in with a more film style and then just adjust the graph a bit now this is more of a cleaner transition we can also use it in like fast-paced editing as well so let's see how that looks all right we've covered a lot I'm gonna end the tutorial there. And if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can hit me up through my website, my Discord server, or my Instagram DMs. All of those are linked in the description below. And let me know what tutorials you guys wanna see, whether it's for After Effects, Premiere, Photoshop, let me know in the comments below. And most importantly, I love you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.